Hi guys, welcome to my tutorial of Game of Thrones 2nd Edition base game. The objective of the game is to get to 7 castles. As soon as you get to 7 castles, the game is over and you are the winner. The unit strength are as follows. 1 for a footman, 2 for a knight, 1 for a ship, 4 for a siege engine but only when attacking a castle or a stronghold. If defending, they have 0 strength. If you want to move your units, either by moving them into an open space or attacking an occupied space, then you need to play a march order. Uh, this can either be a plus one, a zero or a minus one. When you're just moving into an open space, it doesn't really matter which one you play. Um, it's only when attacking that the numbers going to come into effect. So if you play a plus one, then you'd have a plus one attack to whatever your final combat strength is. Um, zero, you'd have nothing. Minus one, obviously, minus one. So defense orders are basically, if you think you're going to get attacked and you don't want to feel the wrath of your opponent, then, you know, maybe help out with a defense order. Uh, adds a plus one to your combat strength if you're going to get attacked. And again, plus two with the start. So a support order basically means that the unit that you place the support order on will take part in any combat that is in an adjacent area to that unit. Uh, this will become more obvious when we initiate combat. Again, uh, with this one, it doesn't actually add uh, anything onto it. It just means that however many units you've got in that area will support the, uh, the battle. Uh, with the plus one, it just yeah, means that they'll still support, but it will be a plus one onto the final combat strength. So raids are played first, uh, as soon as all the tokens are turned over. And they basically mean that um, a raid can get rid of a support or a consolidate power. If it has the star icon on it, then it can also get rid of a defense in any area that is adjacent to that unit that you're placing the token on. Um, so you can only do one per raid order, but it's kind of helpful if you think your opponent's trying to, you know, get some money nearby you, or, or they're trying to defend and you want to attack them and you want to get rid of that defense, or if you think that they're going to support a battle, then you can get rid of that support. So the consolidate tokens are there to basically accrue money throughout the game. Uh, so if you play one of these on one of your units in an area that doesn't have a printed star on the board, then you would get one power token. Uh, and then if you play it on an area that does have a printed crown on the board, then you would get one plus however many printed crowns there are. Um, if you play the crown with the consolidate power token with the uh, star on it, then you can actually muster units depending on whether it's a castle or a stronghold. If it's a, if it's a castle, which is the smaller one, then you get one point of mustering. If it's a stronghold, then you would get two points of mustering. You cannot consolidate power in the sea, but you can consolidate power in a port. So on this turn, Lannister's decided to consolidate power on a lot of his units. Um, so for this one here, you would get one power token at the end of the round. Uh, for this one, you would get two because it's got a printed star. So you'd get one for the printed star, one for the token. Uh, printed crown, so uh, on this one over here, you can use this to either consolidate and take one power token, or you can muster two units. So you can either muster a footman, or two footmen, or one knight, or a siege, or two boats, or like one boat and a footman, basically two points of mustering. For a castle, which is the smaller one, you get one point of mustering. For the stronghold, which is the bigger one, you get two points. With one march order, you can move your units to three unoccupied areas. Uh, so you could move one to there, one to here, and let's say we were using this area, you could move one to there. If you wanted to initiate combat, though, you can only do it in one place. So you can't go there and there and initiate two lots of combat. Um, but you could, you know, do this and then move this guy into here. So let's just say these guys are the only units on the board. You have to put a token on every region that you control. 
with a unit on it. So if you own, say, the Sea World Marches, for instance, but you don't have a man in there, then you don't need to, you can't put a token in there. Uh, you only put tokens down on areas that you control. So this is like a, a combat situation that we're going to have a look at. So we, you place your tokens face down to start with, and then once everybody is ready and everyone has placed down all their tokens, you flip them over. So in this situation, it looks like Lannister is going to attack the Baratheon army. Now what we've got is, the first thing that we do is the raids. Okay, so the raid needs to take place first. So there is a raid here. So what this raid can do is actually get rid of support, consolidate power in any area that is adjacent to it. Only one, it can only do one. So what the Baratheon would most likely do is get rid of this support here. So this support would now come off the board. It means that this unit here cannot be part of any battle or, or cannot be part of the battle that is adjacent to him. Um, however, this Baratheon unit can. So what you've got here is you've got uh, a one from the footman, uh, three altogether with the footman and the knight. It's because the knights are two. Then you've got the plus one, so that's four. And then you've got the ship here, which is also connecting by this by this bit of sea. Ships can support land battles, so this ship here can support uh, onto sea road marches, uh, Lannisport, and Riverland. It can also support sea battles, so it can support here, here. However, land units cannot support sea battles as, well, they are drown. Um, so that is one, two, three, four, five for the ship, and then one for the support as well. Uh, so yeah, so six total. Um, and then up against the Baratheon army, which is one, two, three for the two defense support, four for the footman, because this guy's supporting as well, four, Five for the token. So six versus five. Okay, that's not the end of the combat. Now we would play house cards. But before that happens, Stark over here, because he's also connected to this, he can choose to support this battle and he can choose to support either Baratheon or Lannister. So in this particular battle, Stark has decided to lend his support to the Baratheon army because, come on, let's face it, no one likes the Lannisters. So at the moment you've got one, two, three, four, five, six against six. Okay, so it's very even in this battle. What we're gonna do now is go look at the house cards. So it's six v six before the house cards are shown. And what would happen now is once both players uh, put down a card, so Stark doesn't take part in this, okay? He just offers his support in terms of the units on the board he doesn't play a house card. Um, so this is like your champions going up against each other now. So if we flip them over, we can have a look. So the number at the top is what you add on to your final combat score. Um, so you've got six and, and three, which is nine, and then you've got six and two, which is eight. So unfortunately, what would happen is the Lannisters would win this battle. And then you look at what's down here. Now this can either be text abilities or it can be these swords and fortifications. Now, personally, I think that these should have been shields because it would have made more sense, but let's just say they're shields, but they're fortification symbols. What it basically means is whoever wins, if there's one sword, a fortification icon will block one sword. So if there's three units on the board that, that the Lannisters are attacking and he plays all three of these, you know, this, this card with three swords on it, and there's no fortification symbols on it, those three units die. They get taken off the board. However, one of these will block one sword. So if there was three units getting attacked, then only two of them would die and one of them would survive. It would have to move out of the area that it was getting attacked in, but it would survive and it would be able to be used again the next turn. Um, but without this fortification, it's, it's all doom and gloom, everyone's dead. Uh, so 
if the player loses, then you ignore the sword on the card. It doesn't matter. You only get to use the sword if you win that combat. Once the combat has finished and you move the pieces where they need to go, as in move the Baratheons out of that region now that Lannister is won, both of those cards get discarded until you've used all of your cards and then you'd get all of your cards back by the last one that you used. If you get attacked or if you're attacking someone and you win the combat, uh, if, sorry, if someone's attacking you and they win the combat, and they haven't played any swords, so you don't actually take casualties, but you've lost the actual combat, then you're rooted and you have to move into an unoccupied adjacent area. Uh, if you can't, say you were like on the cliffs and you're surrounded by Lannister men um, and he's attacking here, you can't go into the area that he's just come from. Uh, you would automatically die, so that would come off the board. But if, 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 if you can retreat, then you're rooted and you go over like this. Um, if on the same turn, you know, what, once the turns, the whole turn is finished, everyone's played all their march orders, he stands back up and you can use him again. If during this, this same turn, uh, he then gets attacked again, you still have to play house cards, but he's got zero combat strength. Okay, so whatever he, what, however many units are, are rooted, they've got zero combat strength. So once all of the raids are done, which is done in turn order, then the marches take place again in turn order. So Lannister has two uh, raid, uh, marches at the moment, but he wouldn't do both of those at the same time. He can choose to do one and then it's the next person's turn. So after Lannister, it would be Stark and then Baratheon. If you want to keep this area, you need to place a power token in it. Somebody can just then walk into it and the power token gets removed and goes back to your uh, unavailable power, which is basically like your bank, what you can get. So I'll quickly go over supply. So supply is basically how big of an army you can have. So if you own two barrels, then you can have three armies, one army of three, one army of two, and another army of two. You can have as many individual units so like this guy here is an individual unit this guy here this guy here you can have as many of them as you want in individual regions but in regards to armies you know this is an army here of, of like ignore this footman uh, this is an army of two okay so you don't look at their combat strength but you look at physically how many there is so there's two people there so that's an army of two so the Westeros cards are basically event cards that dictate conditions for that turn. Um, so every turn at the beginning of the turn, before the tokens are placed, we would pull one of these cards and flip them over from each pile. Now the first thing that you do is this top line here, so however many printed wildling icons there are, so there's one here, so the wildlings would move up by one. So I'll explain what the wildlings are in a, in a minute. Um, and then you would do these in order. So you would say, do this one first. Oops. Uh, so, you know, you, it's like a condition. So the holder of the Iron Throne chooses whether A, everyone updates their supply and then reconciles armies. Everyone musters units in castles or stronghold. Or C, this has no effect. Once the holder of the Iron Throne has chosen what will happen, you do that. Everyone does either A, B or C. And then you move on to the next card. So this one is each player collects one power token for each printed power icon on an area that he controls. So, you know, if you own like Starks, for instance, so they've got this down here. So they get one for this one, one for that one. And that's it. They've got no other units in areas that they control with stars on it. And then the next one is Wildlings. This card says that you have to bid on the three influence tracks. So you use the power tokens that you've accrued to bid on the three influence tracks which i'll explain in a second so at certain points in the game all of the players will have to bid on the three influence tracks now they all do different things and they all have a special ability for being top so the iron throne track is turn order so in turn order when it refers to raids and marches it would go baratheon then lannister then stark and you would bid on this now 
the special ability for the Iron Throne is that you can uh, you decide all ties outside of combat. So if, like I said, in this situation where it is uh, one two two, Baratheon will choose to put himself at the top. Um, you know, if it was the other way round and it was actually like like this, then you know Baratheon would still go last, but because he's king at the moment, you know, we're bidding on we're bidding on this track here. Because he's king at the moment, he can choose whether Lannister or Stark goes top or second. And that can make a real big difference to the game in regards to like, you know, who you're taking side with and, and stuff like that. Um, now the fiefdoms track or the Valyrian, you know, this is for the Valyrian steel blade. This decides ties. So in combat, if the final combat strength is 6v6 with Lannister and Baratheon, then Baratheon would win. Um, the same if it's 6v6 Stark and Lannister, then Stark would win. If, however, it was the final combat strength of 5 for Stark, 6 for Baratheon, then he can play his special ability once per turn, which is the Valerian Steel Blade, which adds plus 1, and then he would win because it's a tie. So that's the Fiefdom's Trap. Now the King's Court, or the Messenger Raven, is the third and final track this basically dictates how many star tokens you can play so remember when i said about the bolstered tokens um you know the march plus one the crown with the star on it that's how many of the star tokens you can actually play so at the moment brathian doesn't get a great life with one star uh whereas lanster gets you know great three stars um whoever's at the top of the king's court track also gets the messenger raven which basically means that once all the tokens are flipped over and everyone's shown what they're going to do for that turn, they can do one of two things. They can either change a token for a different token. So if they go, oh, I don't like the idea of that, I'm going to change it for something else. They can take it out, put a different one in uh, that they haven't used. Or they can take a look at the top of the wildling card by pulling it out, pressing Alt and Shift, and it will hide it from everyone else you can see what it says and then you can choose to either put it back on the top or slide it underneath and put it at the bottom so with this cards the wildlings attack um, it basically means that whatever number uh, this is on at the moment collectively the, the every player on the board we have to beat four okay in this situation it's four if it gets to 12 the wildlings automatically attack so it moves up every time you see one of these icons um, once it gets to 12 they automatically attack the other time they attacks when you get this card so collectively each player secretly bids face down how many power tokens they wish to bid okay if they beat four then the highest bidder will get a reward if they don't beat four then they'll all get punished and whoever's bid the lowest will get a bigger punishment. So in this situation, this is how it's played out. Lannister's bid one, Baratheon's bid two, Stark's bid two. So what we would do now is flip over one of these, the top card and read what happens on the card. So highest bidder returns his entire house card discard pile into his hand. So it gets all his house card back. Um, if they didn't beat four though, then like I said, something bad happened. So the lowest bidder, if he has more than one house card in his hand, he discards all cards with the highest combat strength. Really bad, really, really bad. Not as bad, but still bad. Uh, if everyone else, you know, if they have more than one house card in their hand, they must choose and discard one of those cards. So it's not as bad, but it's still not great. Um, in this situation where it's two, two and one, because Baratheon is the king, uh, top of the Iron Throne track, he would choose to take the, the reward, you know, he can choose ties outside of battle. So You can actually choose to burn an order as well, so if you feel like you want to wait and see how this plays out in a minute, uh, you can just get rid of that one. And then it would be, you know, White's turn or Stark's turn or Baratheon's turn or whatever the turn order is. You can also transport units through ships. So um, in this situation, you've got a Lannister boat in the Golden Sound 
and you've got another one in Iron Man's Bay. So if you wanted to get to Flint's Finger rather than having to, you know, use multiple attack moves to get like this, if you put a boat in this area, you can go like this in one in one march. And again, you can actually do this and move like him into there or him into there because there's a boat that's that's attached to this area. So you can also do this if you're uh, initiating combat in the three-player game. Um, this area is off limits to everyone, and that's basically because it's not fair on Stark, because Baratheon and Lannister can just walk down south and win the game by taking loads of castles. Um, but in the in the four player uh, four to six player game, uh, you can take these areas, and they sort of act like garrisons, except you don't have to initiate combat. So. You can actually just walk in here as long as you've got an attack of four and that could be by supporting it could be by attacking with you know a load of units um, as soon as you walk into there you don't have to play house cards you just take that and it's yours so that's game of thrones the board game uh, the base game three player edition i uh, hope you've enjoyed the video and if you've got any questions please don't hesitate to ask because I've uh, I've taught quite a few people on how to play this, and there's always there's always people out there that that know the answers, any rules or anything like that, easy to find. But uh, hope you enjoyed, and uh, see you soon.